getting ready for another live interview with another amazing author. We're going to get her on very shortly. We go live at 7. So we're going to get this connection going right. And we're going to have a conversation with Miss Shannon Spewell, residing out of the Buffalo area. So let's show this young lady some love. Once we get her on the line. doing we're getting ready to get started we're going to interview another amazing author we're talking to inspirational people in the community we're inspiring people to become a part of the arts we're promoting literacy how y'all doing Now, Miss Shannon. Hello. <laughs> How are you, sister? <laughs> I'm glad you can log on. We usually yes, have a couple I was hoping. I, I know about technical <laughs> <laughs> Right. So we are on. How's your Saturday starting off? I've been busy. I've been on early this morning. <laughs> Keep that grind and keep that grind and going. Yes, indeed. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Hello. I'm trying to see if I can switch this. You just went sideways. Okay, let me see. Oh, yeah. It's telling me I can't go sideways. I was see. <laughs> yeah. I was working on my sound. My sound has been giving me some trouble. Okay. Coming through good. Okay. All right. All right. How's everybody doing on this Saturday? It's your girl, Miss Two, coming to you live and direct from the 518. We are here with Miss Shannon Spruell. How do you pronounce that last name? I want to chop it up. Spruels. Spruel. Okay. That sounds better coming <laughs> off you. <laughs> she is coming is the founder and the CEO of SMS Write On Publishing. So she has her own publishing company, people. She is from Brooklyn, and she's moved to Buffalo, um, the Buffalo area. She has been a graduate of Bryan and Stratton College. I currently teach at Bryan and Stratton College. Okay. So that is awesome. She is was the summa cum laude. She has an MBA. She also has a master's in computer information systems. She wrote her first book in 2010, dealing with personal demons. And in 2013, she lost her son in a car accident. Um, and she started a Buffalo chapter for bereaved parents. And she published a book 
on how to cope with death. Wow, that is amazing story. So you turned something out of that tragedy. You moved a couple mountains out the way and now she owns her own company and she is an author and she is, you know, an amazing inspirational woman. So tell us some more about yourself, Miss Shannon. Okay, you cut out a little bit. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I've been, can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Okay. So tell us a little more about your story. I said you moved some mountains out of the way. You had some adversities happen mm -hmm. in your life, but you have turned it around to do something great. Yeah. So like you said, my first book I wrote in 2010, um, and I'll tell you a little story. Actually, I was in the process of writing a fiction. And um, the okay. church I belonged to at that time they were holding a conference and one of the guest ministers afterwards we were in the dining hall and he came up to me and he said I heard that you were writing a book so you know I'm excited this is my first book so I'm like yeah I'm, I'm writing a book so he said what you need to do is you need to go home you need to tear that book up start yes. over because you have a story to tell so mind you I was a little offended because I'm like I'm about to be a best-selling author, and you telling me to tell uh, Right, me hello. <laughs> so I thought right. about it, because it kept resonating within me, and I thought about it, and I was like, okay, he has a point. I do have a story mm -hmm. to tell. Yes. As a child of God, I believe that we are all supposed to minister to other people, to try and encourage yeah. other people. And some of the things that I've went through, I know that there's young ladies out there that are experiencing some of the same struggles and yes. what a better way to reach them than telling my story, let them see that it's okay and that you can get through these things. I dealt with, yeah. in school, I dealt with bullying. I dealt mm. with low self-esteem. Um, I never thought I was pretty. Um, mm -hmm. I look in the mirror and I didn't see a beautiful woman. That's an amazing woman, yes. I didn't see that. I just saw an ugly woman, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it, in grade school, in grammar school, high school, kids can be cruel. And other kids Very have cruel. to endure this. And I, I endured yes. a lot of that. Um, a lot of medical issues. Um, mm -hmm. I had brain surgery. Uh, wow. I had Graves disease. Um, I dealt with a lot of struggles and wow. I'll tell you, my book is showing how God played a role in my life without God. Amen. I couldn't tell you where I'd be. I may be on drugs. I may have been an alcoholic. I may have lost my mind, but it was with Christ right. that I was able to overcome these things. So I wrote that in my first book to share with other women. Um, okay. Then fast forward 2013, mm -hmm. um, 530 in the morning, me and my husband, of course, is in the bed sleep. The phone, <laughs> his phone rings first. Wow. He ain't answering no phone at 530 in the morning. Right. Then my phone rang. And then it was something I felt. It was like, okay, someone's right. trying to get us. Because first his phone, then my right. phone. Right. Answer a phone to a woman, are you the parents of Brian Sproul? And I said, yes. You need to come to Mercy Hospital right away. Well, mind right. you, you, you kind of, I kind of felt it. I kind of knew. Right. Um, right. Your body was, was like, preparing. Yeah. And I said, well, what's wrong? She wouldn't tell me anything. We can't tell you anything. Just get to the hospital. We get to the hospital. Wow. We go to security. They lead us down this long hallway. It must have been the longest walk of my life. And they take mm -hmm. us in this room. When I walk in the room, I see a pamphlet with a candle on it for um wow. bereave, you know for bereavement so it's still, right i'm still fighting it in my head me and my husband didn't say anything to each other and anyone that knows me and mm -hmm. my husband we're like this with each other we talk right it was complete <laughs> silence because right. i think it's, mm -hmm. internally we were processing what we were about to hear so yeah the doctor comes in and i write about this in my book because this was the most poignant, most 
it was deep to me. But the doctor right. was pregnant. Vivid. She was pregnant. And what I took after she told me what she told me was this is a pregnant uh -huh. woman about to bring life into the world while telling me right. my son just left this world. Ooh. So it it was just it was just so deep. Um right. it was right. I must tell you, if you have children, everything but a good. You you cannot understand the pain of losing a child. You can sympathize with me, you can sympathize right. with another woman. But until you've lost a child, which God forbid, I hope that no woman right. has to experience that pain, you could not and understand amen. the pain. Um, right. But I'm here today by the grace of God because it was nobody yes. God has got me to this point. Um, right. I eulogized my son. I, mm. I, I wrote a letter to him every day for the first month after he passed. It was wow. the hardest thing to do, but right. writing Very saved me. Yes. I started pouring what? out the things I wanted to say to him, the things I wish I could have said to him. I put it all in my writing. Right. And I'm going to yes. tell you something. Losing a child, October the 4th, 2013, I became a different person. Yes. There's no way mm -hmm. I am the same person I was before. Reborn. A totally different person. And I, right. my relationship with God is strengthened. Um, yes. Writing is, I've always loved to write. And after my first mm -hmm. book, I figured I did it. That was it. But after my right. son passed away, I was like, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm a and I enjoy right. it. And I've just been writing ever right. since. I'm up to book number eight. I'm actually working All right. book eight and nine. Wow. <laughs> so I, Excellent. I, I love writing. Um yes. I write I write in the fiction genre. Um, but okay. stories that I write about, I try to have some true life in there. You know, mm -hmm. I try to make it be about issues that we don't want to talk about, issues that we want to see right. under the rug. Um, so mm -hmm. there's there's a little a little true to life in my books. I'll put it like that. right, yeah. And which has to be wow. You yeah. you have amazing stories. Yes, yeah. just sharing um, that with us. We appreciate that. There are so many people out there dealing with death, not sure of how yeah. to actually handle it and like you said writing was therapy it was therapy for you yeah and to write those letters after his death that is a very powerful story did you include any of those letters in your books no to me um i included a couple of poems i wrote i wrote but those letters to him those were personal and close to my heart so those yeah. i weren't i wasn't willing to share those but um, right, yeah, right. I shared, in in the book I did a couple of poems, and I actually just re-released the book um, because when I wrote my first book, of course I'm a self-published author. Um, mm -hmm. The first book I did the first mistake of an author, a rookie author, is I didn't okay. get it. I didn't get it professionally edited. I did it myself. Oh. I did the cover design myself. So uh -huh. as I'm learning, as I'm developing, and as I'm growing, I went back, I got it professionally edited, I got the book mm -hmm. cover changed, and the title changed. The original book was My Reflection in the Mirror. The new title is um, Tribulation to Victory, Birth of a Queen. Um, yes, now tell us a little bit about that book, that's, Birth of that's, a Queen. That's, that's, both of, that's my story. That's the things I've okay. been through and dealing with the death of my son. I put them all okay. into one book. Awesome. That, that's the first book. Uh, yes. Then I ventured out into the world of fiction. Uh, my mm -hmm. debut fiction book was Forbidden to Tell. I uh, had mm. a lot of fun writing that one. Okay. Um, What's the forbidden thing that you don't want to tell? <laughs> So it's it's about a woman who was um, molested as a child. Um, it was a family member, two family members. 
which we know that wow. happens in families it's today. Very fine, yes. Yep. And she's married and she's never told her husband about this. So wow. she actually goes out to seek revenge on the men that have hurt her. But okay. as she's planning to do away, I just let's say kill each one of them, when she gets there, yeah. somebody puts her to the punch. Mm, okay. The twister, it is, yeah, it, it will shock you at the end. Trust me. Yeah. Everyone that right. read the book, the feedback I got was like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> right, right. So have a cup of your book with you today. Show uh, us what the cover looks like. I didn't, bring, we are I didn't bring it up. I have a cover of the latest book. Okay. Uh, Show us that. We are talking to Miss Shannon Spruill. She is the author of eight um, titles under her belt and counting. She is um, a fiction writer. She's a novelist as well. And she's showing us the cover of her Grace Noble. Tell us where we can find this book and some of your other titles that you have okay. out there. Um, this is Grace Noble, my latest book. Um, you can Not find it on bad. Amazon and Barnes and Noble, where you can find okay. actually all of my books. If you go to Amazon and type in my name, it'll bring you a list of all of my books. All right, very good. So as always important that you look up the authors we are here supporting literacy we're supporting the arts and empowering people with their voice so when you have an opportunity make sure you go on amazon.com or you can just google her name and i'm sure her titles will come up and you can find her that way so what are some of the ways that other ways that you market your books um social media of course um, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest. I'm just getting into Pinterest. Um, okay, I like Pinterest. <laughs> yeah, starting to do that. Yeah. I try mm -hmm. to do a lot of book expos, um, as yeah. we met at the Rochester That's Book Expo. Best. Yes, um, amazing. Book so I try to any anywhere I can get myself out there. Um, I just. Mm -hmm try to get out there um events where there's right. vending opportunities i try to sign up for those also um i have mm -hmm. a website it is www.authorscannandsprawl.com um so okay. go check it out sign up for my newsletter yeah. um and that's what i'm doing right now right that's right so mm -hmm. i know you're talking about book expos and i know it's a couple more coming up. Do you have any events uh, planned that's coming that we can find you at? Um, we are in the process of putting together a Buffalo Book Expo. Um, we haven't, we're having our first meeting. We haven't solidified a date, but it'll be sometime um, in July. So we'll post information okay. that comes out. Um, Very soon. I'm actually going to be doing Barnes and Noble later in the year. Um, okay. And we're actually doing a celebration. I'm celebrating eight years of writing. We're doing it in right. September. Um, so those that know me and you want to come out and hang out and party, there's going to be food, there's going to be music, there's going to be yeah. surprises. Um, we're going right. to be holding it. For those that are familiar with the Buffalo area, we're going to be holding it at the Steer upstairs in their oh. banquet room um and that's going to be september the 22nd okay i'll that's... be attending the toronto um the toronto yeah, yeah. book expo uh that is august the 3rd in toronto downtown toronto i'll be okay. there nice. um yeah and i'm also more of an educational Adam. trip we're doing the book baby uh conference it's a conference that they do every year in philadelphia um i went last okay. year phenomenal learning experience for authors um you yeah. have some of the industry top industry leaders um best-selling authors are there and it's just a wealth of information so we're doing that right. trip again this year that's awesome so you have I'm a few busy. things i stay busy <laughs> <laughs> up you know you can't if you can't get in front of the people you know they don't know who you are and right. you know what 
have to offer. So we are talking to Shannon Spruwell. She is a author of eight books and counting. So she's doing her thing. She has moved a couple mountains out the way with the help of our Lord. You know, you can never go back wrong when you, you know, turn to what your passion is. Absolutely. So obviously, passion. What are or who are some of your mentors that you would say that helped you um, inspire you to become this writer and this motivational uh, person that you are? Mm. Um, first and foremost, God. Yes. Um, I pray daily. I meditate daily. And I ask him for guidance at all times. So he's number one. Yeah. He's my number one mentor. Um, Amen. <laughs> number two is my husband. I have to okay. be one of the luckiest women in the world because my husband is the my husband. Bi biggest cheerleader. When I, Amen. Start, here, when here. I start doubting myself or I start, eh, he's yeah. looking at me like, oh, don't even, don't go there. You know? Exactly. He <laughs> always pushes me. He always <laughs> The husbands is always coming through and they have your back. Um, and so we definitely want to big up, shout out to the husbands and the spouses who are helping the authors. Um, I think you are frozen, Shannon. Did you freeze or did I freeze? <laughs> Her camera has frozen. We are talking to Miss Sher. She has written eight books and counting we're gonna see if we can get her back on the line i think her information has dropped off but she is about her let's see if i can get her back on go she is talking about some of the adversities that she has come through here she is she's back yeah you know technology technology when you give us something good it's always going to fail exactly. on you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad I figured some things out after a few trials. Oh, yeah. You know, definitely. You know, all things because he rejoiced to see the day begin. I always go fall back on that script. And like you said, lean on your passion and God will guide you in the direction that you need to be once yeah. you submit. You are a totally different person. So tell us about some of that transition that you said you've gone through, being a different person. Um, when you, you hit it right on the head. When I learned to lean totally, depend on God totally, that's when I started seeing yeah. my life change. Um, mm -hmm. and, and he's first in my life. Um, I try to stay within his will and everything that I do. Um, yeah, and he that's that's where that's why I'm where I'm at today. Um, I, Amen. Have, I have business mentors that I turn to for the business aspect of it. Right. Um, I have quite a few. I believe in always surrounding yourself with people that are better than you. Yes, I don't I like, like that. surround myself with people that are just as good as me because then what am I going to learn? I need people yeah. that are better than me that are going to teach me. And then I surround myself with people that are going to pour positivity into me. There you go. Right there. If it's not positive, I can't even deal yeah. with it. It's too much. My ears close down. <laughs> yes. And everything absolutely. else. So that's absolutely. Good vibes. Absolutely. So networking with some good people and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. sticking to the path. Yeah. Right. Um. So, what are anything else that you want to share about one of your books that you want to share a quote or a scripture or something that you want to share with the people? Oh, so you caught me off guard on that. You caught me off guard on that one. Because <laughs> I don't have, but I can, I can, I can share some information about one of them that I just yeah. finished. Um. And I'm looking to build a seminar around this book. I actually just okay. completed a workbook. It is a writing workbook for parents that have lost children. This book, okay. of course, is near and dear to me. It's a book that helps you work through 
the grieving process. A lot of, um, and I quote this from a woman because I do run an organization. It's a nonprofit. It's called Bereaved Parents of the USA. We are a chapter of a national organization. And okay. one of the women in our support group, you know, said, am I still supposed to be feeling like this? And mm -hmm. I said to her, number one, everybody grieves differently. Number two, yeah. there's no timetable on grief. No timetable. You know, you have people that make remarks like, you should be over it by now. Says who? Right. You know, everybody you has their own process and timetable. And this book is designed to help you work through the grief process. Because most importantly, you have to grieve. Holding it in and trying to avoid the grieving is not healthy for you. It's not healthy. So the workbook is designed to help you work through the grieving process. So I'm excited about this book. Um, I'm excited about putting a writing seminar around it. Um, so I, that's a project I'm working on right now. Okay, very good. I like how you said everybody grieves differently. Absolutely. And how some people tell you that you should be over this process by mm -hmm. or, or the acceptance and not the anger or the not. There are, it's, there are statistics that show husband and wives that lose children that statistically those marriages don't last because right. they don't recognize that men and women grieve differently. Mm -hmm. Um, that's true. And and that's where the conflict comes in because the husband may feel one way and feel like you should be feeling the same way. You have to give each other space each other to space. grieve the way that it works for you. Right. And men and women are different. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always going to get a different correlation to a specific event and dealing with death is, you know, there is no parameters. There is no right, there is no wrong, and it's never a good time, especially when it's sudden. Like you dealt with a sudden um, death opposed to a sickness or illness that may take a little longer. So that process right there is, you know, is just yeah. can be overwhelming. I haven't experienced it I myself. So like you I do not understand what you're going through or what you had to go through. I just, you know, through education and hearing things, but those feelings, those emotions can only be express, expressed through somebody like you. Yeah. So I'm glad you started an organization to help other parents with their bereavement process. What are some of the um, steps that you um, talk about with those women or in those groups that can help another mother who has lost a child? Our, our, our support group is designed to be a safe place for you to express your emotions. A lot of women and men, because we have men that come to the group, they come in frustrated because People don't understand how they're feeling. So this is a place to be with people that have gone through a similar situation and can understand what's going on. We talk through, we share. It's a support group designed to share and work through the grief process. Right. And you've probably encouraged many of those women to, to write their story, and they're probably yep. going to publish uh, sooner or later as well, just mm -hmm. hearing some says that writing is therapy. Um, many people don't write because they like, who's going to read it? I don't want somebody to read my words if they're not ready. You know, people like to keep it private. And, so, and, and that's, that's okay. Right. You don't necessarily have to always write to publish it. You can write and keep it for your personal. That's why we journal. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You have to write to have those positive feelings and negative feelings exposed because we don't always have to feel great to be great. Absolutely. So that is one of my models. When I went through a depression, it was like, I don't always have to feel good, but I'm going to continue to go to work. I'm going to, you know, do everything that I need to do. And writing also was therapy for me. So I encouraged more people 
to write. Mm -hmm. So what is one thing you would like to share with somebody um, who may be discouraged about writing or think they're not good enough to write a book themselves or just need some encouragement to get over that, that hump or that obstacle? Um, I've been told this by several people. I first was told it by <laughs> the church I used to be to. And the pastor there told me, everybody has a book in mm -hmm. It's up to you whether you get that out. But if you think about writing or you want to write and you don't know what the first step is, I'll tell you what the first mm -hmm. step is. Write. It's just that thing. Don't worry about if it's the spelling, the grammar. Right. Don't worry about any of that. Just write. All that other stuff will come later. Just write. Mm -hmm. If it's in you, pick up a pen or get a... We don't use pens anymore. Pull out the right. laptop and just right. start writing. Yeah. Start typing. Just start writing. I, I tell you, I, I, I was totally shocked because I try to encourage everybody. If you, if you, if you feel it, write. And right. I got my husband writing. <laughs> he is actually in the process of writing a children's book. Yes, I have him writing. I would have never thought, but hey. You never know who you're going to inspire. Sometimes you set that example and they will follow. That's right. Yes. I mean, you, you just got to keep exuding that fresh energy, that positive energy and it rubs off and like you said surround yourself with people who are better than you yes. people who are doing what you want to do or mm -hmm. see yourself mm -hmm. doing so that they can inspire you yeah like when we book expos i pick a little up from every author there and i'm like i like that i like that i'm gonna do that and, <laughs> so it's important and it's the other people it's important just like you said we have to be willing you know it's, we're brought up in this you know Scrappy Dumb. world, I'm Dumb. trying to get ahead of you and this and that. I feel like if we can share and educate one another, we can grow together. Yeah, and, and that's what I enjoy about. Um, I'm speaking specifically about Corey, um, Corey Tanksley. He's the one that okay. put together the Rochester, um, the Rochester Black, Black Author Expo. It was the yeah. most phenomenal event that I've been a part of. Because yeah. Corey just didn't rent tables for us to sell our books. Corey brought us together as a family of authors. And we right. learn from one another. We network with one another. We build relationships with one another. So the way he did it was just so unique. And I, I commend him. Great job. Mm -hmm. I commend him, definitely. That definitely was, it was my first expo first, and I thought it was amazing. So all the other expos has a little, have a bar to, <laughs> to meet yeah. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Networking, uh, meeting you, meeting some of the other ladies and men there, it was just, it felt like family. Yeah. And it felt like we was trying to encourage each other opposed to, you know, block each other off. Like, just come to my table. Make sure you see my table. See everybody. Yes. Yeah, it was so, a wonderful event, definitely, definitely. Awesome. So what are some next projects that you are working on? What's on your vision board, if you have a vision board at home? What, oh, what I some of those? keeps a vision board. Um, and thank you to Mary Coleman, if you're watching. She's another mentor yeah. of mine. Um, oh, that? The top of my vision board is, interview with Oprah Winfrey. So I ain't there yet, but that's that's at the top of my vision board. But exactly. um projects <laughs> projects that I'm working on right now is I'm working on a, uh, another thriller. Um it's killing me because I can't find the right title yet, but I will. And I'm yeah. also in the middle of another book which is really dear to me. I am on, I'm the board treasurer, and I belong to the board for an organization called Owl Curls. It's a uh, nonprofit organization that provides support to women of color that are going through cancer, chemo, that type of thing. Um, okay. And the president 
is a cancer survivor. Her name is Sharice Walker Betts. Um, she had a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And talking to her, it made me sick. You know, when we think about somebody having cancer, our first thought is, it must be painful. I know they get sick when they go through chemo. You know, I have a lot of medical bills. And those are the things that we focus on. But talking right. to her, I found out, you know, what's the impact on the relationship between the husband and the wife? What's the impact on the children? What's the, yes. what's the impact on the finances? And we sat down and she talked about these things, how they lost so much, how they were getting bills and that they couldn't pay and the bills piled up and they were threatened to turn off their lights and how her husband became the caregiver. And we overlook caregivers so much. Caregivers have a tough job. And Good enough. So what I'm doing is I'm writing a book telling her story, but it's an interview style book. I think it's something everyone needs to know. We really need right. to understand. Cancer, I don't think there's anyone out here that doesn't know someone that has been affected by this horrible disease. So I this agree. book sheds a light on what it's really like. So I'm mm -hmm. excited about that. I hope to have it done by the fall. But um, it's going to be a great read. She really opens up in this book. Um, I'm not going to tell too much. <laughs> right. I want you to get the yep. book. But um, right. it's it, it had me sitting there looking at her and admiring her for the strength. Yeah. Because there were days when she told me, Shannon, there were days I wanted to die. And, it, and to hear her story... Just, I have such a level of respect for her. So I'm excited about that. Um, and we got to put some more pieces to it. But yeah, that'll be book number nine. That is awesome. That is awesome, Shannon. Once again, we are talking to Miss Shannon Spruill. I'm sure I'm not saying that right, but I'm close. You said it better that time. <laughs> every time to Miss Shannon. She has written over eight books and she is study writing. She is in the lab. She has her own company. It is called SMS Write on Publishing. So if you have any publishing questions, you can always ask Shannon. She is on Facebook. She's on Instagram. She has a web page and you can go on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, anywhere that books are sold really, and ask about her books. And she is um, doing big things in the communities. You got to few dates coming up. That is awesome to stay active. She's marketing her book as best we can as starving artists, right? So one of the <laughs> biggest of marketing is finding the best solution to do that. So um, it has been awesome talking to you. Yes, do you have any uh, last words that you want to share? Tell us again about your web page and your podcast. She has a podcast. Yes. She's doing so many so share some of your last words with us, Miss Shannon. Um, first, I want to say once again, thank you for my bell because I love my yes. bell. <laughs> thank you. Um, Always last fine. words is like I said, if if you have a passion, even if it's not writing, whatever you're passionate about, just do it. Just like the 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 what is it the switch sign? Just do it. Um, my website once again is author Shannon Sproul. And Sproul is spelled S P is in Paul R U I L L dot com. Um, I'm on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. I'm also on Facebook. I have two Facebook pages. I have an author page, and I also have a group um, to to let my people know what I'm up to. Uh, so right. it's called What's Happening with Author Shannon Sproul. Um, if you want to email me, my email is Shannon M, like Mary, Sproul at gmail.com. Yes. And tell us about your podcast. This is how I yes. met. Yes. This young is woman how we met. I actually have a podcast. <laughs> it's available <laughs> on iTunes, Spotify, uh, a couple other ones, but it's right. called Author Talks Back. 
So right before the Rochester Expo, I actually, I think I interviewed almost <laughs> half of the authors that were at the Expo. But um, it's, right. a, it's designed to be an informational podcast for authors that are interested in writing or interested in the business side, publishing. Um, I'm on break now because we finished season one. I think we have like 16 episodes up there. Um, and season two is supposed to start this month. I'm looking to do some book reviews and do some different things. So once again, it's called Author Talks Back. If you're if you're an Apple person, if you go to iTunes and just search Author Talks Back, you can subscribe to it. Um, same thing on Spotify, you can subscribe to it. That is awesome. That is awesome. She is doing uh, several things in the community. This is one of our inspirational authors that we're talking to um, for the month of June. We're promoting literacy the arts, and we are empowering other people to share their voice. It's so important that you be heard and that you have something important to say when you speak. So for that you tune in for another segment of my inspirational people in the community. We will be talking to more authors next week, but today we have Ms. Shannon Spruill, and, and I, make sure you... I just want to say before I leave, because I like to, I love to recognize my people. Denise, thank you for tuning in. Karen, love you. Thank you for tuning in. Rich, it's good to see you, even though I literally don't see you. <laughs> Eric, thank you for tuning in. Katrina and your husband, we you know he was going to be there. <laughs> but all of you, I don't think I missed, oh, Raquel, Raquel, thank you so much for tuning in. So, guys, I hope yeah. I didn't leave anybody out. If I did, it's because I don't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> I love you all, and thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, thank you all for tuning in. We enjoy you coming and seeing inspirational people for the month of June. Make sure you come back and check out Miss Two Poetry page. She will have her links in the bottom where you can buy her books, and you can check out her webpage. So, so we very, Very soon, soon. We'll we will see you, see you next time. And remember, share your voice. All right, Miss Shannon. We'll talk Thank to you, you later. Bye, dear. All right.